Hello, hello, welcome back to this channel and this September and almost all of October reading wrap up. <laughs> As I'm filming this, it is like the 27th of October and to be honest, I'm not reading anything right now because I'm really focusing on uni. So I think I can make this a September and October reading wrap up, which should be fine. <laughs> So we have all of the books over here. I have them in no particular order. I'm just going to go at it as they are here. And the first one on this little stack is Home Before Dark. And I just thought this book was fun. <laughs> this book was supposed to be my kind of Halloween-y type of read. I mean, obviously it's October, so some of these books are going to be a little bit Halloween themed. And this is basically about a haunted house. So Maggie Holt and her family lived in this house and they basically got spooked out of the house and they fled and she can't really remember because she was really young. She was six or seven at the point and they fled out of the house and her dad wrote a book about this haunted house and it became like a national bestseller and a lot of people that she meets actually know her and know her as like the girl from the haunted house and it's very much affected her life so she is kind of not happy with the fact that her dad wrote this book and then her dad eventually passes away and she finds out that the family actually still owns this house she decides to go there move in renovate it because she's a house flipper and then sell the house so that's basically where the story starts and she, of course, wants to find out what really happened because obviously her family did flee from this situation. They never really talked to her about what actually happened in the house. And so this is her little exploration of finding out what actually happened. I thought this book was just a super fun read, especially for October. This was a great book for the season. It was pretty spooky, but it wasn't like horribly gory or a real horror kind of book because I personally can't read stuff like that. So I just really enjoyed it. This was a fun little mystery that was set in a house it was spooky there were some elements to it that i did not expect some things that you could kind of guess or i was like hmm maybe this or that will happen but it was just an overall fun book so i gave this a thorough three and a half stars it wasn't any anything exceptional but it was perfect for this season and i really enjoyed reading it so the next book over here is the wall and i actually saw this in the new york review of books and got it from there so it was a recommendation out of that little magazine this is a dystopian book and basically it's set into like, a, I guess a nearer future. We've had a climate crisis and the sea levels have risen so high that most of the land in the world is now uninhabitable. But an island pretty similar to the UK, so we can kind of guess that this is like the UK. So there's this island and people can still live there, but around this island they have a ginormous wall to keep out the so-called others. And these others are basically trying to flee to this island because they don't really have any place to live. Like I said, there's not much land you can actually live on. And this story starts with a person who has to go to the wall. Because in this dystopian future, every single person has to go to the wall for one year of their life, basically as like a duty or like a service that everyone has to provide for their country. And that's where the story starts. And that's, I'm not gonna say anything more on that. What I really liked about this book is that it did pick up a lot of the themes that we're kind of seeing right now between older generations and younger generations, especially pertaining to the climate crisis. So in this book, for example, there's an older generation who's never had to work at the wall, who was born when the world was still fine, so when there was no climate crisis, and in the eyes of the younger people, the older people are the ones that screwed up, because obviously they didn't implement enough things to, to keep the world the way it was, the way it is now, basically. And so the younger people are kind of angry with the older people and the older people want to kind of help the younger people because it's their, you know, their kids and everything, but they can't really help them because the world is completely different than the way they grew up. And I found that that was really well captured here because we obviously do have that generational gap. We have Fridays for Future here and we have people protesting, young people going out into the streets for the climate crisis and older people not really reacting to that. So there were little things like that that this book really picked up on. The wall is also obviously a big symbol for the EU keeping people out because we do have a crisis of people like trying to flee over the ocean and then actually drowning in rafts and boats 
boats and all kinds of makeshift boats on the sea because they're trying to get to Europe, but a lot of European border countries, of course, are keeping them out and there's a, a lot of legislation on trying to keep rev refugees out of the EU, so that also was reflected well in the book. Storytelling-wise, this um, was very typical dystopian, I would say, so there's a very typical like journey of the hero and certain situations that unfold, so I didn't think it was necessarily a masterpiece in that. Maybe I've just read too many dystopian novels at this point, but I still really like this book, mainly because it picked up on some really good themes that we can see right now and just putting them into fiction and into a literary scenario was just a lot of fun for me personally to see. So if you're generally interested in like EU refugee climate dystopian things, this is definitely a book for you. The next book over here is Night, and this is actually a memoir. This is the memoir of a person that survived the concentration camp in Auschwitz. So this is a difficult read. It's very short. It's only 111 pages long. No, 115, something like that. So it's a very, very short book, very short memoir. I don't write memoirs here on this channel. I don't know. I don't think we should forget the things that have happened. And even though I've had extensive history classes on that period in time in Germany, because I grew up in Germany and I went to German schools and they do a very good job of working through that time period, I still think I, you can always educate yourself further and just reading these accounts, it made me cry several times, so it's just crazy. So if this interests you in any way, check out Night. Next on my stack over here is The Only Good Indians. And, hmm, I don't really know how to describe this book. <laughs> I have to be completely honest, this book was not my cup of tea. <laughs> I, I thought for Halloween I would try reading some more, I guess, horror. I think this is a real, true horror book. It's just not my kind of thing. So the premise of this is that these three friends, they go hunting. They go hunting on an illegal space and they basically, they kill elk, they have their kills, and, um, yeah, that's the premise of the story, and they do something that I'm not going to describe here. This thing that they do, it basically comes back to haunt them and to find them 10 years later. I think what bothered me in this book were two things. Number one, it basically only has one plot line, and because of that, I mean, if we do have several different characters, yes, and we kind of get introduced to the characters, but because there's really only one plot line and you really know what's going to happen in that plot line, I just plain thought this book wasn't very interesting, I have to be honest, it just wasn't, didn't tickle me much. The other thing is, I'm not really good with violence. <laughs> I even have an issue like watching violence um, in TV shows and in movies and stuff, I can have some issues with that, um, I can't go to sleep. What I've learned now reading um, a book that has some violence in it and some horror elements in it, although I heard beforehand that this wasn't too bad so I was still gonna read it, my mind just doesn't imagine it. <laughs> right? So when you're reading a book, you're like going through the book and you, you, in your inner eye, you imagine everything that's actually happening. Your imagination plays, you know, does its thing. When I read violent scenes, I now have figured out that my head just doesn't do it. It's like, it just goes blank. <laughs> I've never had that before. I was like reading the scenes and I kept rereading and rereading and rereading them because I was like, what the hell? But yeah, my head just doesn't do it. It just stops. It's just like, oh, no, we're not doing that for you today. Which I guess is like a good self-preservation mechanism to just not replay stuff like that in my inner eye, I guess. This wasn't just wasn't my cup of tea, but I think if you do like horror, um, if that's more your genre and very kind of strong thriller-ish e types of books, I think you would really enjoy this. What I did like about it is, of course, the elements of like speaking about being native or speaking about spirituality and certain points or native of spirituality at certain points that was actually that's always something that I enjoy reading about so I did really like that about this story but yeah it just wasn't my cup of tea I gave it two stars but that's just my opinion <laughs> but if you do like horror I think this might be a good book for you so the next book over here is the other black girl and uh, I don't know I have mixed feelings about this book to be honest I did really like the idea of this book so this book is about Nella who works at a publishing company she works in a corporate environment and for a while she's been the only black girl on basically in the whole company or in the whole office and then they hire a new black girl that comes in and Nella starts getting these really weird mysterious notes of someone saying like leave the publishing house now stop working here get out it was advertised as a cross between the devil wears prada and like a thriller 
and I didn't get either of those vibes in this book. <laughs> so I was kind of confused going through the book and there were some things I didn't like about it, but there were some things that I really did like about it. What I really liked about this book is actually how somebody on Storygraph wrote, this book is unapologetically black. And I actually love that about this book. I 100% agree with that sentence and that's what I really liked about it. This was a deep dive into black culture, black hair, and you know just having black people talk to each other about the working environments and corporate environments and what's that what that is like relating to youtubers who talk about black culture and all of those things and actually i enjoyed that about this book the most if this had just been a book about like some office pettiness for like 200 pages with all of the elements of black culture that it had i think i would have absolutely loved this book but it turned kind of weird mystery for me and it was quite slow. So I wrote down here in my notes, um, I'm at page 200 of out of 350 and I'm still not feeling it. So it was just a bit too long and the parts of the book where nothing really happens or where you don't really have any kind of plot development are just too long. I also felt that a lot of the characters weren't fully developed and the villain at the end basically wasn't fully developed at all. It was just sprung on us in the last 50 pages and so plot wise it just absolutely didn't work for me. There were also one or two things in the stories where it's like as a scientist I need more explanation than that. <laughs> if you've read the book you'll know what I mean but I just I would have needed a bit more explanation on how yeah how 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 they're doing this yeah it just didn't work for me on, on many of the plot points and unfortunately some of the characters just weren't developed as well as i would have liked but i did still really enjoy reading about this corporate environment and i think as a white person reading that i definitely have to remember that when and if i ever do work in an office environment or in a corporate environment to make sure that every single person there feels welcome in the team and feels like they can speak up and voice their concerns for Really. That's something that I really want to to be able to achieve and I think reading books like this and having insight into that is exactly what will help me get to that point. So that's an element that I really did enjoy but plot wise it didn't really work for me unfortunately. Let me know your thoughts on this book though if you did read it. So the next book here on my pile is Beautiful Country and this is also a memoir. I was actually really excited to see this. I saw this on Book of the Month and I was like oh wow that sounds really interesting and this is basically about the author and she emigrated to the US from China with her parents and they immigrated illegally. So they were illegal immigrants in New York City. This basically talks about her childhood and what that was like and I thought the insights in this book were just absolutely amazing. They basically got into a cycle of poverty and it was really difficult to get out of that and she describes just what her childhood was like, what the thoughts were in her head, what was occupying her as a kid and what she was scared of and whatnot and you get an awesome and great insight into what it is like to be an immigrant, especially an illegal immigrant. I have so much respect for her and her family, especially her mom. Oh my god, I fell in love with her mom in this book. So I thought this was such an incredible read. I really did enjoy it. At some points it was just a bit long, I guess. I didn't realize that the whole book would just be about her childhood, so at some points it did feel like we weren't really getting anywhere because it was such a short time frame. But on the other hand, that's a great reflection of what she was feeling like as a child because she obviously didn't feel like she was getting anywhere either because she had an illegal status in the States and was scared of doing anything, even of going to college, etc. Absolutely recommend this because I think this is a good account of what it's like to be an immigrant in the States, especially if without documents and what that feels like. Next book over here is The Maidens. This was obviously also a october -y crime kind of read and this had a very dark academia vibe to it. All in all, to be honest, this book felt somehow forced. I, don't, I can't really describe it. But basically this book is about Mariana. Her husband recently passed away and she has like a niece in at Cambridge University and then there's a murder that occurs at the university and she goes there for her niece and then she kind of starts snooping around and trying to figure out who the murderer is. And that's what I mean with it felt forced. It's like, why the hell are you not letting the police do their job? I mean, obviously the police was kind of ignorant in this story and was kind of dismissing her. And yes, I, I understand that 
that that is a thing that happens and that is extremely frustrating but she wasn't exactly in a position to be like i have no experience i'm a psychiatrist but i'm going to try and find the murderer now and play detective it was just a weird premise i, I don't know it, it was weird to me it just somehow it did not feel natural that she started snooping around and everything and in everyone's business and i was like okay i'm fine i guess and the twist was a little too twisty for me so at like the half of this book so every once in a while with crime and mystery books and everything i'll sit there and i'll be like so what is the most absurd outcome of this book then i think of the most absurd outcome and then when that outcome comes true it's like really <laughs> and that's kind of what happened in this book so i did halfway through think of what would be the most absurd outcome and i was like yep that's exactly what happened i didn't really like that about it but it was written well <laughs> i do have to give it to this book this book had a great style and it was super atmospheric and that's what still made it fun to read. Because this takes place at Cambridge and on a campus and it's also dark academia and ooh and wah and the vibes are just the vibes that they are, I still really enjoyed this story. That's what I really really liked about it and it was also written very well. There's a lot of like Greek mythology in here and a lot of parallels shown and that just made it a very fun read nonetheless. So plot wise there were still one or two things where I was like mm, okay but all in all it was still a great and enjoyable read especially because of the way it was written especially because of the atmosphere I really enjoyed the atmosphere of the book I have to say it was like the perfect fall vibe when you're sitting on your couch and drinking your tea and yeah it was a perfect vibe for that so I really enjoyed it and I gave it three stars I think so the last book here is 56 Days and this book caught my eye because it's the first real pandemic read. So this book takes place in the first lockdown for most of us, March 2020, of the wonderful Panini. This book is about a couple or two people that just just met like in a supermarket and they decide to go into lockdown together and then they decide yeah to go into lockdown together and figure out whether they're really a couple or not or want to be dating in a relationship whatever and at the end ends up dead and that is the story of how this unfolds there is one perspective in here the perspective of the detective that i thought was completely unnecessary it's like why <laughs> and um beyond that it was just kind of a Bit of a predictable read. I don't know. It, it wasn't anything special, but it was still perfectly entertaining. What I also really liked is actually seeing the whole parallels to the pandemic. It was, it was really nice to see that time reflected in a book because we all, and that's just amazing to me, we all went through the exact same things, thoughts and feelings at the beginning of this whole thing in the first lockdown and that's why it was just so interesting to to read about that to read about the thoughts that i had that someone else is having in this book so that's why i actually enjoyed it the most i didn't necessarily enjoy the plot the most i really truly enjoyed reading about the pandemic and i'm really excited to see how books and movies and tv shows will work through the panini in the future that's my reading wrap up for september and october so those are all the books that i have around here i have no idea i have not counted yet how many books it was but over two months it was an okay amount and i'm pretty i'm still very happy with that i didn't read much um like in the second half of october just because I was starting to use books to procrastinate a little bit in the morning and I wanted to stop doing that because I need to focus on university at this point. I'm slowly getting into my next book now. So let me know in the comments what you have been reading these past few months, if you enjoyed it or not, if you read any of these books and if you like them or not. And we'll see each other soon. Bye!